Here we are, three RTs out for the day. This is going to be a very good test because if you've seen my video on the Pyre Pyrenees, I did moan a lot about the Garmin. I think I've sorted it. So we're doing a route today of three of us. Two IAM mates, Phil, who took me through my IAM four years ago, and then the National Observer, Jeff, who got me to do my Masters last year. And uh, they're coming with me. We're doing a, a, the Buxton Loop. Which is a long route, 160 miles, about six hours. I and mean, if this route works, then I've cracked it. So they've all got this route that I sent them with the GPX file. And I'm going to leave for a bit. And uh, we're going to test this will be the biggest test. One of the good things is that Jeff, who's got a brand new RT1250, got it last week. He's um, kept his Navigator 4. Phil, who's got a, a new RT1250 a couple of months ago, he's got a Navigator 5. And I've got a Navigator 6. So this is a real scientific test on whether BMW actually works. So we're coming towards Ogson Reservoir now on our way out to the peak. In this ride, which is one from Ride Magazine that I've uh, adjusted slightly, it covers so much of the peak district. Good, bad and ugly. And it's very, very interesting. I've done it a couple of times. Every time you find something new. I've adjusted a little bit because we've got to go through Whaley Bridge. And it's only last week that the residents were allowed back in after the problem with the dam. So whether we do the whole thing today, this is all the test on whether the base camp routing on an Apple Mac, on a MacBook, will be successful since we got in such a mess in Spain. But I think I know the answer. So we come through Tansley and we're coming down into Matlock now. It's a Monday morning so it's not so bad today, but I expect Matlock will still be very busy. It normally is in August. A lovely little Peak District town, Matlock. A lot of independent shops and restaurants. This one on the right here on the corner, can you see, not whether you'll see it on the GoPro, the Tuk Tuk on the roof. That used to be the cinema. That is uh, Mazzy's restaurant there. Quite an incredible place to eat, to be truthful. Uh, they used to do us, they probably still do tiffins at lunchtime. You ring them up and they would drive them to your factory, to your office, wherever they are. Just like in uh, Mumbai, a box with a complete rice variation of curries and a chapati. Wonderful for about £3.54. £3. Incredible restaurant. Rose petals on the stairs as it goes up. You can tell it was an old cinema, can't you? great place to eat. They got one at Haversage as well. This is crossing the river into the other side of Matlock town. There's a restaurant there on the left. And you see Stone's Restaurant. I don't know whether you can pick it up. It's down there by the river. Once a year, I usually take my wife there for her anniversary. Very expensive, but amazing. 
I saw it in the Sunday Times one a couple of years ago as one of the best restaurants. Couldn't believe it was just there. Just here in Matlock, it is really, really good. And you see the type of uh, shops along Matlock. I say mostly independent. There's a incredible furniture shop here, Indigo Furniture. So here we come into Matlock Bath. And you see the cable cars up there. We've been here for many years now. Never done them. Lovely river to the left. Better view of the cable cars there. So just coming into Matlock Bath itself now. This is a lot of chip shops and uh, amusement arcades. It was very, very classy many years ago. They have Venetian nights on the river very soon. A couple of weeks time at night. It's very, very nice out. But this was, this is the bikers place and many bikers know this area. I see a few here today, but it is a Monday. Bikers shops. So this is Cromford, we're going into Via Gelio. Very strange name. But uh, a biker's dream. You'll see that with the uh, the bends. But also full of also full of lorries, vans, traffic. If it's clear, then it's a beautiful road. But it doesn't look very clear, does it? This is just a start, of course. Gotta be ever so careful on this road. There's been a lot of uh, biker crashes because there are many quarries above up in the Peak District and the lorries come down here. Gotta get your positioning right. Phil, when he was training me as an observer for the IAM often brought me on this road. Your positioning, your spacing, your gears, the IPSCA, information, position, speed, gears, and acceleration. Have to be taken into consideration on this road. It does actually look as if the heavens are going to open any second. There's not supposed to be any rain today. There's a lorry. You see the problem. So normally it is a nice road. Often you find uh, you can come up and down here with no traffic at all. At all. So these two cars are turning off now. Let's hope it's a little bit freer. It is a 50 limit though, 40 limit here. In a moment, up to a 50 limit. Now we're 50. But lorries, lorries, lorries.
see why it's lovely. But there's nothing in front of you. The 50 limit is a joy. I know the sports bike riders come up here at a crazy speed. But you can enjoy it at 50 mile an hour. a bit. Opening out into the Peak District now. This is where a festival was a couple of weeks ago. Where you see the tents. It's a Why Not Festival. Pretty big now. Big names come here. Made a mistake of coming for a ride one Friday, the day that the festival started. You have to filter for miles. The queues go right back. I don't know what the tents are still doing, maybe they just use it as a camping, oh yeah, it looks like it, camping, caravan in place now, but that's where the festival is. This right turn in here, I did this with Phil on my last ride before my advanced test, and I'll never forget it, he was a good teacher. I turned right here, nobody was coming except for one car coming in from the right and the car indicated left. So I pulled out, just like that. Boy, it did fill. Did Phil let me have it when we got to Buxton? He said, what was that car doing? I said, it was indicating left, and he said, exactly. It was indicating. Didn't mean it was going to do it. I really did learn my lesson. IAM is all about safety. Making progress, but safety. And I always thank Cope for that little lesson at that time. We're now coming down into the beautiful little peak village of Hartington. We're going to stop and have a coffee here. We've been going about an hour, and it, the temperatures there, uh, we started at 18, it's now down to 12, so we're just beginning to feel it. This is old railway line, that's now the Tissington Trail, where people walk and cycle, and can go right to the, the Peak District on that. Hartington is a lovely little village, which you'll see in a moment. So this is Hartington. Wouldn't you love to live in that little cottage? Everything a, school, uh, a village is made of, isn't it? School, hotel, pub, little gift shops. So we're going to find somewhere to park. Are we? Yeah. 
be okay here. Yeah, because it, it used to be a cafe, but it's not any, any longer. Yeah, but what about these signs? I'm saying it used to be a cafe. It used to be delivery. There's no more delivery. That's great. We're not sure whether we can park here. We'd be okay here, won't we? Well, that was a great cup of coffee in Hartington. We're all a little bit chilled now, we can't believe it after uh, so many beautiful days of sunshine, but we we'll carry on. We've all stopped because uh, a symbol has come up on Jeff's brand new bike that shows keys. Oh, I can see it now, look, all in orange. Yeah. What? It's gone off again now. I walk away oh, it has it. gone off, yeah. It must be okay though. When you walk away, it goes orange. Oh, I take both these bikes have got a keyless ignition. Mine hasn't, so I don't know what I'm looking at. No, it's still white. It's still white. It must be okay if it's white. Yeah. Because you were messing about with it, maybe everything's still locked, and that's telling you that all your panniers are locked. Yeah, it is locked. Unlock it. It's gone now. What are you doing? Hit, hit that. Oh, yeah. But you, you'd actually, but you'd, it's good to dry, ride with them locked in case one comes open. You're so a genius. It, yeah, it comes back again, look. Oh, I see. So it's, sim it's symbolising that... I tell you what, Jeff, if I ride back Yeah, <laughs> it's faulty. You've had it two days, you've done 90 miles, it's no good. <laughs> well, after the drama of the keyless ignition, we're at Hume End. I've never stopped here, but it looks quite an amazing little place. Manifold Valley, that is a place for walkers. Incredible. Manifold Valley Visitor Centre. These villagers in the uh, in the stone are beautiful, aren't they? Oh, we're actually in Staffordshire now. We've come out of Derbyshire because the Peak District covers a few counties. All beautiful roads, well. And even here we are in the middle of August, very little traffic once you get away from the main towns. National speed limit here, which is a quite rare in the Peak District, most of it is 50 mile an hour, but here we have uh, 60, so we can enjoy it a little bit more. Just beginning to rain now, thank you BBC, no rain today. Longo, normally stop here for lunch in that cafe right opposite this there, it's a beautiful little cafe. Whoops. Harley's from uh, 
Germany. I don't think they know where they're going. Health and Safety Executive right up here. This is a beautiful little stretch, isn't it? Typical English country. We're just um, we're coming up to to Buxton. It's still 11 degrees now. We're not used to this. I think we might have to put a few more layers on, but uh, still the rain has stopped at the moment. And from Buxton, I think we're going on the Cat and Fiddle, if I remember this route. I have a feeling we won't complete this route. When we stop for coffee and it takes an hour, I think we've blown it a bit, but let's see how far we can get through. Lorries everywhere, aren't they? A lot of uh, open mines up here. So here we go on the famous Cat and Fiddle, another very well-known biking route but it is very dangerous so they've put in average speed cameras at 50 mile an hour throughout the whole length of the cat and fiddle really but at 50 mile an hour you can enjoy it I know the sports bike guys uh, very sad that these cameras have been put up but a beautiful Peak District Road bends all the way and at 50 mile an hour you can concentrate on your position your gearing riding just correctly I enjoy it except for there's a bus in front The Cat and Fiddle pub is quite famous on the top for bikers, but I believe it's closed still. It was closed last year. There was talk about it being reopened. We'll have a see it, look in a minute to see if it has. Just past it, there's a, a cracking little cafe, but it's normally closed on Mondays. Bikers, as you can see, love this route. Many lorries on it, so you do have to be careful. But you can see the attraction of a road like this. But keep checking your speed because those cameras at 50 mile an hour average will definitely get you. What a space. You won't see on the GoPro, right on the horizon there is a Cat and Fiddle pub. Can you imagine it in the winter? Totally snowbound. But again, a mecca for bikers. Uh, but whether it's open anymore, I don't know. We'll have a look. There seems to be some activity up there. 50 mile an hour. On this bit actually seems very slow, doesn't it? Because it's it's wide roads, very open, but uh, you dare not exceed it. Those cameras will get you. So we're coming up to the Cat and Fiddle now. I've stopped there many times. It's it's quite a landmark. I don't think it looks open. I'm 
sure I read that it was going to reopen soon. There's some cars there though. Now it's all closed up. What a shame, eh? But this is a cafe that's so good. And I always stop here usually for lunch, but I'm quite sure it's closed on Mondays and it's Monday today. So there'll be no stopping today. So if you're disappointed with the Cat and Fiddle pub being closed, this restaurant and tea rooms is wonderful. Except today. You can see the bends and the lorries. The combination of both isn't uh, isn't the best. But it's a, a fabulous road. long sweeping road as it goes down into Macclesfield we turn off before there's still quite a bit to go yeah tight bands here bikers everywhere <laughs> What more could you want on a dry day? Well, things were going really well until we turned off the cattle and fiddle onto a very dodgy road and we've come out here. It was so bad I couldn't even switch the camera on because it was covered with grit, huge potholes, and halfway down, I lost my route, and so did Phil. <laughs> but Jeff, was, Jeff still got the route, so I'm following Jeff now. Ah, I can see on my sat nav a magenta line. So it was obviously somewhere along the line. I, uh, I don't know how. I took the wrong road. This is how they're all different. These. Uh, Navigators, Jeff's held to the route. Yeah, we should have come down there. Ah, I missed a turn in on that very bad lane. That's the only problem. You see a way of cutting out the whole of Mas Macclesfield, but you don't actually know how good the road is. And the minute we turned on it, I thought we've made a big mistake here. I wish I could have filmed it now, but I just didn't switch my camera on and lose concentration but we're back on the route now another 6.2 miles before we turn but Jeff in front is looking for somewhere to eat it's okay when there's three of you all with routes if one of them fails somebody else keeps it up I suppose we're in Cheshire now, I imagine, though I didn't see any signs for it. Macclesfield turned north now. It certainly looks as if we're heading for some pretty serious rain. And when do you stop to put your water overalls on? I never know. I always decide when I'm soaking wet, then it's too late. Jeff's got his Gore-Tex on, but Phil and myself have only got uh, non-waterproof jackets on. 
because of course it's the middle of August and beautiful. Okay, the weather suddenly changed. It's really, uh, we're going into some pretty heavy rain by the look of it. You never find anywhere to stop to put your waterproofs on, do you? You always go on, I do this so many times, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So this is Whaley Bridge. I don't know whether you can see the whether we will see the reservoir on the right. Actually they want to they do want people to stop and use them, they've lost business. There's the dam. Completely empty by the look of it. That's amazing. It's only a week ago everybody was evacuated. Hopefully we can find somewhere to get some lunch, because I'm getting very wet. And I'll put all my waterproofs on, and so will Phil, and then the sun will come out. But at the moment I can feel it getting through. So I hope Jeff can see somewhere. Imagine this whole town would have gone if that burst had, if that dam had burst. How difficult that would have been. But the road should be open now. Last week they weren't open. So Jeff's going to go into the town centre by the look of it. That's great. Ah. Stuck in traffic lights. Whaley Bridge. Hardly anybody had heard of this, had they? Until the last fortnight. I wonder if it's all back to working again. I suppose it is. With the dam completely drained, is there, there's not going to be any danger at the moment. Now we're going to find Jeff. Oh yeah, I can see him. <laughs> 